the hell was that? Engines. All over this country. Gotta watch out for them. Well, you know, there really is something to be in. out here on the road. Start shining bright. Hear the coyotes calling. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know well as I do, this shit sucks. It's cold. It's dark. Can't get no signal. What are you talking about? We got smoke signal. It's dark. We can't <laughs> see him. Hey, why don't you check them rations out? Get a little bit hungry. Alright. Let's see what we got here. You want uh you want peppered or original? Don't we have anything else? No, this is what we got. I told you to pick up 200 pounds of beef jerky. I thought you said to pepper. This is all we have left. I guess it's bare bones rations and grueling pace. Warp speed. The hell does that mean? Everyone knows what Oregon Trail is. It's the ultimate example of edutainment. A game that, at its core, intended to teach kids how dangerous and just plain awful the trip across the country was in a covered wagon. Interestingly, the game, through its wild RNG imbalances, actually teaches kids something that could not be effectively taught if the game was, you know, actually well designed. That is that sometimes, regardless of your preparations, things outside your control will just conspire against your success. We all know the most common joke to go along with Oregon Trail visuals is the sentence, you have died of dysentery. This phrase so perfectly sums up Oregon Trail as a concept that the creators of this card game decided to use it as a tagline on the box. This is as bad an omen as it seems. Enter the Oregon Trail card game. The start and end points are the same, Independence, Missouri to Willamita Valley, Oregon, and the distance traveled feels just as long and impossible. Players of this game will need to cooperate to conquer 50 cards before they can stake their claim in Oregon. Since this is a tabletop game, this can, and in our opinion, absolutely should, be adjusted, based on the rules stating that the start and end points be laid out on the table roughly three feet apart. Closer together means less cards to connect the endpoints. further away is further away, you get the idea. It can be a physical difficulty slider. How far do you think we've gone? About five miles. How many days we've been traveling? About three. How much longer? Well, we gotta make us all the way to Oregon. Can we pull that closer? It's it's kind of far away. Your table. Easy. Each turn consists of a player continuing along the trail and or most likely and dealing with a calamity. Calamities can be as fairly harmless as bad water, saw by any player giving up their water on their turn to save them, all the way to both dysentery and or snake bite, both of which are just instant, unavoidable death to the party member that drew it. Now, since the game is intended to be played by two to six people, this goes from entertainingly reverential on paper to absolute horse apples in practice. There are, between dysentery and snake bite, four instant death draws in the deck of calamities. Since we only had two players, we both drew dysentery within a couple of turns of each other and could do nothing to prevent our fate. For this reason, it's very strongly recommended that you play with the maximum number of players, if for no other reason than to just have some meat shields around to protect against immediate death. Additionally, when a player dies, they're buried with all but two of their possessions from the supplies, and they can will the supplies to the others, so having more people around means more active storage for everyone. Speaking of the supplies, they alone make iteration time between rounds an absolute chore. The supplies are to be dealt to players randomly at the start of each journey, then the remainder is to be organized neatly in a shop. Players may trade any two supplies they have for one of their choosing at any time. This means when you all die and you want to start over, you have to collect all the supplies, shuffle them together, deal, and reorganize them. This mechanic is made extra frustrating when you remember that the preparation stage of the PC games is one of the most memorable parts. You didn't just go and get random things at the shop and hope it'd work out. No, you went to the shop, got 500 pounds each of bacon and bullets, and you knew it wouldn't work out. But it was more fun that way. Not allowing players to choose their own supplies makes it annoying when you just didn't get the needed supplies for certain calamities, 
some of which can cause an immediate party wipe when left unresolved. All right, this one connects. We'll lay it down there. Draw calamity. Snake bite. You have died of a snake bite. Then she said, honey, this one's eating my- Oh! Ah, oh, man. Ah. Oh. Got any medicine? We don't have, we don't got nothing. We got no food. Got no rations. No water. Can you make it to the next town? How far is it? Not far. I can't take it anymore. No. Ah! I can't do it! <laughs> That's a shame. All right, well, I guess I'll just keep going. That connects, and I gotta draw a calamity. Starvation. Your food supplies are low, and you are starving. Survive another day with one food card. Well, I don't have any. Oh, well. As for the presentation, it's all over the place. The box and trail cards use the familiar Apple II graphics, simple lo-fi pixel art. The Calamities use a style that looks more at home on a Super Nintendo or maybe a DOS point-and-click adventure. Meanwhile, the shop items look like they were ripped right off of some mobile game's in-app purchase screen. And the card backs are all high-res wallpaper. All of the cards came packed in the box in one big, frustratingly shuffled together deck. A couple of other oddities in this box. An inexplicably blank black D6 with a set of numbered stickers. These are just normal numbers, so we don't understand why they couldn't have either had the die printed like any other one, or just included a plain old D6, given that there are no special icons or anything. A dry erase card, marker, and eraser. Pure forgettable novelty. Its intended purpose is to have players write down their names as party members and write each other's epitaphs on the gravestones seen on the reverse. Erasable for multiple runs, useless in gameplay. To sum up, horrifically imbalanced gameplay, frustrating setup and iteration breakdown, and attention deficit, ooh shiny, presentation makes it impossible to recommend for anything other than novelty. That's all for now, snake oil buyers. Here lies the Oregon Trail card game, overrun by dust bunnies when no player was dealt a claw.